Hello, folks. This time we're going to talk about musical beats. Now, musical beats are different from the percussion part of a band. Uh, percussion, I mean like the drum, the drummer going bam, 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 and keeping the beat, that beat that you dance to, the beat that's really nice and fun in the background of music. Musical beats are different. This is produced when you have two very, very close frequencies and they produce constructive and destructive interference when these two frequencies are sounded at the same time. Now I'm about to make a very strange sound. So musical beats due to these two similar frequencies are going to produce something that kind of goes wow 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 and they can vary in speed so that you can have wow 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 or you can have a very long beat frequency that's wow wow and this is due to constructive and destructive interference of sound now you can calculate the beat frequency of two musical sounds. Um, it's simple. It's probably the simplest mathematical equation we have through the entire course. The beat frequency is the absolute value of the difference between the two frequencies. So for example, if I am sounding two notes at the same time, 443 hertz and 439 hertz, uh, 443 minus 439, I'm going to have 4 hertz, and it doesn't matter which one you subtract from either one because it's the absolute value, and that is going to be the beat frequency. That means every second there's going to be four of those wah 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 kind of sound. Now you might be asking, Mary, aside from making funny noises, why are you talking about this weird and crazy stuff? Well, I'm talking about it because musical beats are used to tune musical instruments. Um, if a piano tuner comes in, now we're talking old-fashioned piano tuner, if an old-fashioned piano tuner comes in to tune your piano, um, he or she is going to be armed with a bunch of tuning forks. That's why they're called tuning forks. And the piano tuner is going to sound a tuning fork, strike a note on the piano, and then listen. Now, what is this person listening for? They're listening for the wow, 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 those, those, those interference patterns produced by those sounds. And then he or she is going to adjust the tension of one of those strings as the two beat frequencies get closer and closer and closer to being exactly the same, the, the frequency is going to be closer to zero. The difference between these two is going to be closer to zero. So as the piano gets in tune, or that one note gets in tune, it's going to go from going wow, 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 and it's no longer going to have a beat frequency. Um, a trivial question that gets asked very often amongst physicists who are nerds who have nothing better to do is how long does it take to tune a piano until it's perfect? And the answer is an infinite amount of time. Why? Because if you got two frequencies that are exactly the same, what is their beat frequency? An infinite amount of time. So yeah, we're nerdy. Now, you might be a musician and you might have a tuner. Um, you can buy separate little devices if you have a guitar or some sort of an instrument and you can play very often concert A, 440 hertz, um, into this instrument or near this instrument and it will have little lights and it will flash and tell you if you are flat or sharp and if you have to adjust your instrument one way or another. Many people do this in the modern age with apps on their phone. Again, it's designed around concert A, 440 hertz, and you play that note and it will tell you if you are flat or sharp and from there the musician can tune their instrument correctly. Each individual musical note has its own specific frequency of vibration. Uh, this happens to be a piano, and every unique key on the piano has one specific frequency at which that note 
vibrates. Now, there are different musical scales. This is one uh, people who are professional musicians who know all of the mathematics of music. There are slightly different musical scales, and this is just one that I captured, uh, one chromatic scale. And there are others that are, the math is slightly different, or the, the frequencies are slightly different. When you talk about an octave, just like oct means eight uh, in music, an octave is eight notes higher or lower. And one of the things that's nifty from a physics standpoint is that when you talk about an octave, uh, for example, middle C on a piano to the next high C, the frequency is exactly twice as much. So if you go from middle C on a piano to the next highest C on the piano, those frequencies are going to be double. And if you go one octave higher still, the frequency is going to be double again. And if you go one C lower, that frequency is going to be one half. The cool thing is, ladies and gentlemen, music was invented long before physics discovered this mathematical relationship of what sounds nice and what makes an octave. The other thing that's really cool about musical sounds is those of you who have ever played a musical instrument, chords, unique uh, notes that sound good together, have frequencies that have simple whole number ratios between one frequency and another frequency. So if you're playing on a piano and you play a C and a G at the same time, those happen to be two notes that sound nice together. The ratio between their two frequencies is 1.5 to 1. That's a nice whole number ratio, or it's a nice ratio. If you pick an, a C and an E, those two num notes sound nice together, and the ratio is 1.25 to 1. There's nice ratio shows between those numbers. You pick two notes that sound ucky together, and ucky um, is going to have ucky ratios. And again, the cool thing is, math came second. The music was invented first. The human ear likes these simple, simple mathematical relationships. We humans find those sounds pleasing, and that just blows me away that there's mathematics buried inside of music that existed long before we scientists even showed up to the table. All right, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.